a bastion of white middle-class southern privilege. That's how MP David Lammy described Oxford University, after figures showed it's still struggling to admit more BAME and state school students. As someone who's helping the university with their diversity drive, I welcome Lammy's criticisms, but I think he's missing the wider issue of our two-tier education system and the fact that in Britain, unfortunately, you get the education your parents can afford to pay for. We divide our children by class, allowing some parents to purchase a ticket on the fast train to affluence via privately funded schools stopping at any of Britain's top universities. For parents who can't afford to buy a home in the catchment area of a good state school, their kids muddle through an overstretched, underfunded, comprehensive system where only the most exceptional students are able to get a seat at the table for top jobs. I think it's time to put an end to our private school system altogether. We need our schools to be a microcosm of society. That's how we begin to level the playing field. <laughs> Look at these two! <laughs> you're always so fashionable. <laughs> and you're going to have to wear a North Korean boiler suit because this is the policy. And I just don't think it'll suit you. This is the policy. It's called choice. Now, I know you have to be well remunerated. You talk about an overstretched and underfunded, yes. com underfunded yeah. comprehensive. Yes, something called grammar schools, of which there aren't enough, and we've debated that before. Anyway, we're not so let's get not break, but I do think that's part. But let's just quickly, without hitting you with too many statistics, Please, go I'd like ahead. just to show clearly private schools work. And let me show. Remember, just we seven. We know that. That's remember, my point. Hold on a second, June so on. <laughs> remember, June so wrong. Remember <laughs> that just seven percent of children attend private schools. Yet seventy percent of High Court judges How attended terrible. private You're schools. Fifty-four percent. Hold Thank on. Of you, FTSE 100 Rachel. chief executives. I don't need to say hold anything on. else. <laughs> attended private schools, and a fraction over half, fifty-one percent of medics attended private ah. schools. And by rough calculation, forty percent of today's pledge panel That's attended private schools. That's why we need to scrap they, them. They, Thank they, you. Oh, June, Thank June, you. June, no. They work. No. People like them. If they're fortunate enough to be rich, let's bring the comprehensive system up and let's allow parents' okay. choice. Okay. No, so, no, no, social, no. Jim, social let you do mobility. your bit, then I'll social I'm mobility. Let you all say your bit. Which is what gives, which is what a good education gives kids. It's about giving young people more access to privilege. It's not about taking it away from the ones who already had it. You That's must have heard. What I'm saying. You must have no, no. But we have a very complex class system in this country, and and you, I know for and I just where know, it begins. Okay. Is OK, OK, but let me just say that the, the gap between the rich and the poor is ever widening in this country. And what will happen if you abolish all private schools mm. is that the, the rich will create an elite sector where they move into areas, they pay That's premium prices for big houses, and we're doing it now. But also, but the point that I do agree with you, you can't just chuck a few Oxbridge places at disadvantaged kids. It starts much earlier than that. And what I think what disadvantaged kids do not get, and I think... I think the assault on dis disadvantaged kids is built into the fabric of our society right now. It's going to be hard to shoot. But what those kids don't have, that middle-class kids and kids of rich parents, is there's nowhere for them to get inspiration. There's no, there's no one to tell them what they can do, what they can become, where they can go. And, you know, I come from a family... I, I failed in the education system. I went to secondary school, failed the 11 plus. My, my prospects were as a clerk in an office. Mm. Save but for one teacher in mm. my secondary school, mm -hmm. who was the first person in my life who told me I could be anything, do anything. My parents told me that people like us didn't get to be journalists. Can I say... And that's what's happening oh, in can that... Can I say one well, thing... Well, they were right in one you. way, but I look at well, you. Well, yeah, I'm well, yes. Can I say one thing, Greg, and then I'll bring you in? So, the reason why I think we need to... <laughs> look at Rachel's face. The reason I think we need to get rid of private schools altogether is for a number of reasons. First of all... I'll take my own story. So I went to a normal state school. But what happened in my state school was my area was becoming gentrified as I was growing up. So therefore you had a sort of lot of middle class do good as people like yourself, Greg, <laughs> who um, <laughs> sent their kids to my school. As a result, our PTA was fantastic. And so we had great corporate links. So I was able to get work experience at the age of 16, which changed my life. Mm. And what I'm saying is if all kids are in the same schools, yeah. I tell you what, the standard is raised for everybody. Comprehensive yeah. systems the system, are based... The standard is raised for everyone. Comprehensive and are based on the assumption and that all kids need and the mixing. Mixing. Join in this debate. Sorry, um, carry just on. The two of you. No, please. Oh. Right? Fine. I think you, you should, First of all, 58% mm. of admissions talks for the kids from state schools, which yeah. means 42% 
come from private schools where yeah. only 7% of the population go. Yeah. Now, if you actually get into this and look at it in detail, certain public schools mm. have relationships with certain colleges, which means if you go to that school, it's you go to that line. university. Yeah. It's a pipeline. It yeah. goes straight through. Yeah. And it is not... You don't have to be that clever. No. You, because you're at that school and you go through there. The idea that, that Oxbridge takes only the cleverest isn't true. It's just not true, because there's all sorts of clever kids who don't get anywhere near it because they didn't go to the right school. Totally. Yeah. Now, your idea that you're going to ban uh, yeah. private schools, well, it's, it's yeah. not going to happen. Well, I know. It's, it's not going to happen. I know it's not going to happen, but I'm do, saying I could, think it should what happen. What we could start off by doing mm. is ending the tax breaks for, for, for public schools, and which they get quite status. significant yeah. tax breaks. Yeah. Don't give them the tax breaks. Yeah. But we've, you're right, we've got to get more kids we've got, and we've got to put more pressure on places like Oxford and say, look, it's not acceptable to you to have this relationship with that school and all these kids come from there. And, and I'm going to bring in David Lambie's grab and then I'll comment on what Oxford are actually doing. So let's have a look at what David had to say. What we're seeing is entrenched privilege at Oxford and Cambridge. What we're seeing is some tutors recruiting in their own image, the same schools year after year, sending kids to Oxford and Cambridge, and even if you get the grades in other parts of the country being squeezed out. It's unacceptable, it's poor practice, and they know it. And, and what I will say in, in Oxford's defence, slightly, is what they've done is they've actually created a diversity and inclusion department. And the issue is there isn't enough of a pipeline between those universities and our state school systems. What you're saying is true in the way that with the private school system, it's just clear. So what I'm saying is that if all the kids are educated together, and, it, and actually, if in adult life we want people to be able to integrate, it needs to start earlier. But also, they have an interview... Sorry, Rachel. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Right. Yeah. They, have an interview, they have an interview system, which means it's not just based upon getting so many star days. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. They have an interview system, and the interview system is inevitably biased in favour of the more confident kids. Well, well clearly, Oxbridge will take anybody. Rachel John, Johnson. Rachel. <laughs> Hands up on this panel who went to Oxbridge. You did. Well, <laughs> well that's because, obviously, my oh, school had a relationship no. with my college, didn't it? I don't know. And I, I, think it was, who went I still think it was school. a mistake, actually. Both of you. But, yeah. June, I mean, look, the problem is, is that, obviously, if we were remaking the education system from mm. scratch, we wouldn't start where we are now. Because yeah. if you look at um, France, Germany, even America, yeah. only the thick kids go to posh private schools. <laughs> yeah. well, and much the same here, if you look at you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you mean... And... Everyone else that goes to the lycée or the gymnasium or whatever they're yeah. called, and, ev and it's a much more level playing field. And I long, you know, and I wish that we could have done that here. But, but at some point, but we, we need can't. To do so we got something. to make it. So what so are you suggesting? If we no, have, no, what am I suggesting? Me. Yeah. I mean, I've said two, but I mean, I realise it's a throwaway comment that you know mm. we should get rid of the private schools. But you know what? More I've used schools. them myself. We should have more I've private used them schools. Myself. More grammar schools. We should have more private schools. Because that would make the state up their game. is right which is that we have to bring up the state system to match, but to equal a, the yes, private system, yes. and then that, parents no, but, would but, fall but, on it with, with like, but, ravening beasts. Absolutely. But still, we'll always have that problem, because you will always have the problem whereby the private schools with the wealthiest kids have the clear pipeline. And I think, actually, when everybody's edu being educated together, even the way the wealthy kids view the world is different. And I yeah. think that's really important. If these are the people we're expecting to lead us and they've never actually integrated and I give you Jacob people, Brees mogg There you go. But I mean, he would be a very different son, human but, being but, had he grown up with much more diversity. Should, he's a very nice well. man, we look put at more him. pressure? Shouldn't governments put more pressure on the Ox on Oxbridge, the, the Oxford why, why? to take more kids from Oxbridge? Why demonise Oxbridge they're doing, is they're... all Russell Group? You know, no, 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 it's, and actually, it's not all Russell uh, Group. York, is... where I was Chancellor, was, was, uh, had 80-odd percent from state schools. Certain schools that have relationships... It's certain universities that in particular have relationships with certain schools, certain private schools. 